Sorry, uh, the first half, you see the team go up nine, basically go up ten. And uh, you saw, even though with that turnaround, the effort was still there, the execution to get that lead down and have a chance to steal the game still was, was, was there. Like, What do you feel like um, they, the, the team did so well uh, to give yourself a chance to win this game? Um, first of all, I just want to you know, thank our fans. You know, they've been unbelievable this year, you know, sticking behind us, the inconsistencies of, you know, lineups and different things. And um, they stuck behind us 100%. And so I just want to say thank the fans. They was they were great, you know, all year long. Um, my whole tenure here, the last three years have been great. Um, I want to thank my coaching staff, second of all, um, who put in work every single day and um, helped me and um, in every way and shape and form I need. Um, they're always there for me. and. Um, I couldn't do this by myself. And so I want to thank my coaching staff. And then I want to just thank the players, you know, for an everyday grind for nine months and um, to get to this point. And um, no matter who's in the lineup, who plays, um, those guys play hard for me every night. And so I can't ask for uh, much more than that, you know, being a head coach, just having guys that are going to compete and fight for me every single night. Um, that's all you can ask for. Um, and then I want to thank the organization, you know, um, Mr. Bomber and Lawrence and Winger, you know, Mark Hughes, Trent, just uh, thank those guys for the opportunity, um, you know, and just, you know, put me in this position and all the support they've given me the last three years. And so I want to thank those guys as well. And so it's a collective group that's, you know, put in hard work for a lot of days and um, it's just it's good to have that feeling. And so um, to answer your question, they just kind of got away from us in the third quarter. You know, they went on a hell of a scoring barrage and it was tough for us to, to slow them down, you know, and then I had, I didn't have very many timeouts left. And um, so we took a couple early and then we only had two with like five minutes to go in the third quarter. So, um, you know, give them credit. Like I said, Booker was, was tough all series. You know, we couldn't stop him. We had no answer for him. Um, we tried to blitz, we couldn't get him blitz. We tried to fire, we couldn't get, you know, we couldn't get our fires. And um, he just, he was really elusive, you know, could split and dribble around and, um, it was just tough, you know, it was tough for us. But I like the way we competed. I like our physicality. I liked a lot of things we did. And like you said, in that fourth quarter, just fighting back and um, with a rust layup, having a chance to cut it, I mean, to tie it up. And uh, we missed a layup. But um, I never fought our guys' effort in the locker room. And like I said, we just ran up against a, a really good opponent. Um, you know, mine did a great job. And um, that's it. Just to, just to follow up and <clears throat> just pardon um, the, the, the thought but um, this was a trying season. Um, I know for you, not just with the team, but otherwise, um, it's been a trying three years and everything. Like, um, how do you kind of get yourself to a point where you can kind of reflect and, and, and give yourself time um, to, you know, get through uh, what you need to continue on after uh, this season? Um, you know, for me, I think. Um you know, the encouraging thing is, like, with our team, with PG and Kawhi healthy, we haven't lost a series yet, you know. And so, um, you know, it's always in the back of your mind, like, what if? And, you know, it's, you know, it's easy to say what if because a lot of guys get hurt. But it's just been, you know, our luck the last three years. And so um, if you look back to, you know, my first year taking over, you know, uh, we did some really good things. And, you know, Kawhi tears his ACL. Then he misses the whole next season. But... We haven't lost a series with our with our whole team, and so that's that's encouraging. Um, and so, you know, just you know, I think just taking some time and let our coaches get a break, let everybody get a break, and just reflect on the season, and then come back and you know just try to be better than we were this year. Coach, when you think about um, your time overall, you know, you were just talking about this really since you took this position of as head coach of the Clippers, would you say that overall you've been dealt an unfair hand or do you enjoy the challenges that come with the injuries and all the ups and downs? I would never say an unfair hand. I would say I've been dealt some some bad luck, you know, just some, um, you know, with, with our two-star players, you know. But, you know, it's as easy as it is for me to say, oh, we missed those. But, I mean, it's, it's harder for those guys. You know, you think PG and Kawhi want to be hurt, you know, in the playoffs, you know. So... Um, I feel bad for those guys because they want to be out there helping their team and to compete. And um, just unfortunately, you know, the last three years we haven't had that. And so, you know, I feel b bad for those guys for putting all the hard work in, 
you know, Kawhi, all the dedication he put in from the ACL, coming back, playing his best basketball since January 1st, and then for this to happen, you know. And so I feel bad for those guys, you know. And so, you know, it is what it is. And like I said, back to the drawing board and uh, come back next year and, you know, hopefully we can have a healthy team. Ty, what, beyond the injuries, what sticks with you about the way this season didn't live up to your guys' high expectations? What else could be? I mean, yeah, our two best players got hurt. I mean, that, <laughs> I mean, which takes Steph and Clay off of Golden State, take Booker and KD off this team. Greek Freak was out two games. They could. He's the best. You know, so just you know, take your two best players off of any team in the league and see if they can win in the playoffs. I guess a team that's picked to win it. You know, so no letdowns. Like I said, I'm proud of every guy in that, in that locker room. Um, scrap and compete every night. You know, and that's all you can ask for. You know, when you're shorthanded, and so. You know, you take the two best players off anybody's team, they're not going to win. I don't care, you know, how you look at it. They're not going to do it, you know. And so, um, but that doesn't mean you can't compete and fight and play hard and play the right way every single night. And like I said, I, I really thank our guys for doing that every single night, even in tough situations, you know, we had to go through. And, you know, bringing Russ here, you know, really, really saved, saved our season as far as making the playoffs and having this run that we had in the playoffs. Um, he really saved us. And so, you know, um, hats off to Russ, you know, for bringing it every single night. Sir, I know it's hard to focus on one player on a night like this, but can you talk about the performance of uh, Nicolas Batum? Because he struggled all series long. And in the fourth quarter, he really, you know, what he wants. Yeah, to. I mean, Nico was great tonight. You know, I think, you know, with his ball pressure on CP, you know, rebounding the basketball, um, but to make some open shots to kind of, you know, we had a chance to take the lead by one on one of his threes if he'd have made it. You know, down two, he had a three, we missed it. But, I mean, I thought it was great all night. And I thought everybody that played tonight really contributed, you know, in the best way they could. And, um, like I said, we just got, you know, a couple breaks that, you know, missed three, missed layup by Russ that didn't go our way. And, um, you know, we lost the game. Hey, Ty, um, follow up on Russ real quick. Um, I, I asked Paul earlier this today, but do, do you guys feel validated at all with, with how well he played and how important he was to this team and the sort of like asking for him like you guys did? Yes, ma'am. I thought, you know, and, the. What, what do you see for, for, see for him next year, either with you guys or otherwise? Um, I think, you know, for us, you know, just having a great owner, you know, and Mr. Bomber to let us, you know, explore, you know, some different things and having a chance and opportunity to, to get Russ. And so, um, you know, he was on board. I know, you know, um, Gilliam was on board. Um, you know, Lawrence and those guys were on board. And so that made it easy. And so, um, you know, usually when I, you know, ask for something or something, they usually try to make, you know, make sure they get it done. And um, it, it was huge for us. And so I hope everybody can see, you know, just different situations, you know, different teams, different situations where guys play differently in, in different spots. And so, you know, hopefully guys can see that Russ still has a lot left in the tank and um, hope he's back with us next year. But then again, I hope this has um, opened the eyes to a lot of other teams to, you know, give him opportunity if he can really go out there and get paid, you know. So, um, but I would want him back for sure. Ty, you answered a variation of this earlier, but. Um, so why are you asking again? I'm asking a different way. A different way? Yeah. But you want the same answer? No, I don't. Okay. Answer. All right. I'm hoping for a different I'll answer. I'll try. Um, for you personally, though, this it has been a long year, personal uh, off-the-court stuff as well. Uh, not, not questioning necessarily the commitment, but how hard is it to go through this grind? And, and, and I guess how committed are you to, to going through? That's not the best way to word it. But committed to going through this again next year, um, hoping that we have better results um, with, with injury luck and everything. Well, for me, just I think the grind, you know, starts, I think, you know, with my family, like I said, and having, you know, the deaths of my family that I had all season long, that kind of, you know, was tough, tough situations. Um, you know, you can, you know, for me, like the game's giving me everything. And so um, I never want to cheat the game. And, you know, sometimes um, you can make wrong choices as far as not going home to some funerals, you know, with your family members and, and staying here. But knowing you lost five games in a row and, you know, you don't want to leave your team out. You know, it's just a, it's a lot that goes into it, you know. Um, and for me, um, you know, it was, it was some tough decisions. If we had won six in a row, of course I'd have went home. But um, just for me, I just thought I didn't want to let the team down. And like I said, sometimes it could be too much. You know, maybe I should have went home. You know, I don't know. But um, this game has given me everything. It's given my family everything. And I never really want to cheat the game. 
And so when times get hard, um, that's when people look to their leader to see, you know, what you're going to do. Are you going to come out of this or you going to fold and, you know, make excuses? And, you know, I'm not that type of person, you know, so I can take all the heat. I can take all the criticism and I can take tough times. And so when your team sees you go through tough times and you're still here in the fight with those guys, that's why they play hard and compete for me every single night. So you, 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 I'm sure you've learned a lot about this team um, just in the spoiler series and, and over the course of the year. Um, we talked about Russ a lot, but you had three new guys in addition to Russ who kind of came in and played big rotation minutes and everything. I'm sh like if there was something that you said you had to learn about this team from a roster standpoint, from a personality standpoint, based off where we were last year, like how do you feel like that helps for, for next season? as far as what this team needs around your best players? Yeah, I think, you know, having a training camp and um, having a training camp and get a chance to understand what we want defense, uh, defensively and offensively, you know, 21 games left in the season, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, it's tough to try to, you know, try different things, you know, for those guys to be up to speed, what we do. Um, but, you know, Eric Gordon was great for us, you know, since he's been here, you know, toughing it out, playing through, you know, a hip injury. Um, he could have gave up. You know, he could have quit, you know, but that's not in his DNA. And so those are the guys that we want here to be L.A. Clippers is guys that want to fight hard, want to compete, um, no matter what the circumstances are. You know, being down 3-1, and everybody knew he was hurt, but he still wanted to play and give it a go. Um, Mace has been phenomenal for us all year. Bones, I think once he gets a training camp underneath his wing and understand how we want to play, put in some different plays for him, um, he'll be a lot better. And so, you know, it's tough. I mean, as tough as it is for coaches, it's tough for a player to be traded with 21 games left and having to fit in, having to learn everyone, and um, it's even tougher for, tougher for those guys. Last one, Andy. Ty, um, I, two quick ones. One was just you talked about decisions you could have made or not made, other things you go back on, decisions. You think, I wish I could have done that differently coaching-wise this year. No. Just to Do you think I should have done something different? No, I'm just oh, curious. okay. Well, you paused just, like okay, open, yeah. open ended. I just, yeah, I mean, I, sh I mean, probably a lot of things, but I mean, I don't, I don't know right now. I mean, yeah. you know, anytime you lose a game, you think about what I could have done differently, what I could have done better. Like it starts with me first, um, and that's, so that's how I, that's how I look at everything. It starts with me first, and then you kind of go down the line. But I mean, probably a lot of things, but I don't know right offhand. And then just just to hit it directly, I mean, there's been speculation that because it's been a frustrating year that you might. Walk away. I'm just to hit it directly. Do you expect to? You talked about next year a lot tonight. Do you expect to be his coach next year? Yes, sir. Thank you.